Hi, my name's Wayne Combin, small boat angler. I do like catching fish, and uh, on occasions, I certainly do like eating fish. If you eat fish, nothing better than learning how to prep and cook it yourself. Today, we've got some very nice place, and we're gonna do a simple recipe, homemade breadcrumbs, breaded place goujons, lovely. Side salad with that, and maybe some boiled potatoes, some green beans, who knows? We do all the things off the cuff here, so what we've got in the kitchen is what we're gonna use over to the place and show you how to fill it in. Okay, we've got a small place here, but he's certainly table size. And uh, he's lost a little bit of colour. When they're fresh out of the sea, they're beautiful orange spots, lovely dark brown usually. Um, they do lose a touch of colour. If you're going to buy one from a fishmonger, just have a look that he's got those orange spots are noticeable, his eyes nice and clear, telling he's a bit fresher than uh, maybe some that have been sitting on ice for a while. Okay, we've taken one of the uh, fillets off of this place. We don't want the skin on for this recipe, so I'll show you a very easy way of removing the skin from a fillet of fish. You can see the skin on it there. Okay, so what you want to do, nice sharp knife, flat surface, just before the tip there, the, the, this would be the tail end of the fish, just go in and level out, don't go through the skin. Now, what you want to do is, Grab hold of that piece of skin you have there, keep the knife flush, and as you wiggle the skin from side to side, keep the knife flush, like so, and what you end up with is the skin off and the fillet left on. No meat on there, there's a bit of skin, get rid of that, and there's your fillet of fish there. A little bit raggedy on the side there, purely because that is the thin edge of a place. Now, nothing wrong with eating that piece of fish, as you say, neaten it up, it looks all right, you can cut it off if you really want to. For this, for the sake of this, let's cut it off. You just take that off there. And what you have there is a piece of place, boneless, skinless. If I then cut that again in half, and a half again, we'll have a couple of very small little goujons, which is what we're going to cook with. Okay, we've just filleted our place, cut them into little goujons. Uh, we'll just get these potatoes on first, because they're going to take the longest to cook. So these are just uh, some nice little new baby potatoes. Straight into the boiling water. I'm leaving the skins on these because they're nice and soft. I've washed them. Um, now, a bit of salt in the water maybe. Yeah, why not? A little bit won't hurt. And now take about 15, maybe maybe 20 minutes just to soften up. While they're cooking, we're we'll gonna prep some beans um, and then lastly, do the place. Now, personally, I wouldn't buy breadcrumbs. I would I've never some of the breadcrumbs you can buy in, in like some sort of gravy tub to me are pretty revolting. So it couldn't be easy to make them yourself. Cut yourself a couple of nice thin slices of bread, heat an oven up, turn the temperature down so it's just just on maybe 50 degrees, put those pieces of bread onto a baking tray, stick them in the oven for maybe 15 minutes, turn them once, which I'm about to do now by the way. And what that'll do is, that'll dry that bread out. You don't want it too dry because it'll go like dust. But you just want to dry most of the moisture out of it. Then, if you've got a blender, whisk them up roughly, not too fine. Again, this is quite important. You want a bit of texture in these breadcrumbs. Um, I'll show you this in a minute when we've done. But you want to break them down into nice rough pieces, and then we'll coat the goujons with them and fry them. We'll show them in a minute. Right, we've got our potatoes on, we've got our beans on. Uh, we're just about to prep the place goujons. Again, simplicity itself, I do like simple. There they are there, cut into even sized pieces. Tiny, tiny bit of flour on them, not a lot, but just again, it helps with the... Uh, helps with stuff to stick, but um, you'll see what I'm gonna do in a moment. Again, I'm not too fussed about this. It just takes a little bit of that moisture out of the fillets. Helps uh, everything stick. Like I say, I don't want a lot on there. Now we're going to get ourselves an egg. And what we're going to do is just beat the egg. Don't need to see this. I'm sure everyone knows how to beat an egg, but there you go. Get that nice 
and mix together. Right, now what we're going to do in a moment, we're going to check our bread. That's virtually there, we'll turn the oven off. Okay, as mentioned earlier, we've got our bread out of the oven. Now, you can hear that's got a bit of break to it, but it's not totally, totally dry. Now what we're going to do in a moment, we're going to whisk that up rough to make our breadcrumbs. Now believe you me, it's worth doing this. It might look a bit finicky, a bit of a pain in the arras. It's not, it's worth doing. Because homemade breadcrumbs are so far superior to the stuff you can buy in those silly little tubs. It really is, it's worth doing. Trust me, try it. Caught me out there. Oh, what's in Mandel? It's like black orange, it's so easy to drink, but uh, very nice. Okay, we've done our breadcrumbs. We've whisked up our egg. I'm just going to season that egg because it's ever so slightly. Bit of salt, bit of pepper. Not a lot. Not a lot of that, that's white pepper, which is a bit hotter than your normal black pepper. Just beat that in. Now our potatoes are virtually done over there. I've got the pan on with a little bit of oil in it. Again, I've used uh, plain, I think this is uh, sunflower oil again. So make sure it coats the pan nicely. Now you don't want this smoking hot, you really don't. You want it hot, but you don't want it smoking hot. So that's in the pan at the moment. By the time I've uh, done these goujons, that will be just about the right temperature. So here they are. Now, simplicity itself, what you do, get a bit of fish. Dip in your beaten egg, straight onto those breadcrumbs. Now it looks a bit messy, it will look a little bit messy with these homemade ones. Don't worry about that. All this fancy chefy business and that lot, do you know at the end of the day, it really is about what it tastes like. And it'll look nice when it's on the plate, you can take my word for that. Anyhow, we'll do these individually. Now these are very, very What's the word? What's the word that chefs would like to use? Um, well, I suppose uh, if you want to use a chefy term, these are a bit rustic, which is good as far as I'm concerned. Do you know what? Food is to be enjoyed. It really is. And yeah, it does help when it looks nice on the plate. There's no two ways about it. But do you know what? Really, it's about how it tastes at the end of the day, and that is that is key. I mean, it can look something can look nice and taste horrible. Well. We're eating it. We're not putting it on the wall, are we? Looking at it, we're eating it. So, the most important thing for me is taste. And as I say, these may look a little bit rustic, but uh, you can take my word for it. They are well worth the effort. Okay, we've only got a little bit of oil in there. We're only shallow frying. You don't want to drown it, so you don't want too much. I've just got enough to coat the pan. Now that's hot enough. There's our fish with all our nice uh, homemade breadcrumbs on. And again, get them in the pan quick as you can. You need that little sizzle as they go in. Try to keep a little bit of separation between them if you can. This means they cook better. If you've got any bigger bits, again, probably put them in first. Wouldn't be a bad move. Last one. Now, here's a point. Once you put them in like that, leave them. Don't go fiddling around, moving them around. All you do is you break them up. So just leave them, keep an eye on them, and what will happen is you'll just see the undersides just on the edges starting to brown. That's the time to turn them over, and we'll show them a tip. Right, now these are only very thin fillets, so they take no time at all to cook. Now what you want to do, if you're wondering and you don't want to move them around, as I said, because they do break up, have a look at the fillet very closely and you'll see that just the edges are starting to turn opaque. 
I'm just starting to get whiter, as you can see. Now that tells me that these are virtually ready to turn over. Okay, there's the last one turned over. You can see they've got a very nice golden colour to them. And that fish is just, just starting to cook through. Almost there. Just going to prep the rest of the plate, put the veg on. There's our potatoes on. There's our green beans. Nice knob of butter just melting over those potatoes. Beautiful. Right, this fish is now done. Do not overcook it. It'll taste like cotton wool. Horrible texture, dry out. Don't be afraid of undercooking it slightly. You, if it's too undercooked, you'll know. It'll be sticky still and translucent and, and, and not particularly nice, but it's a fine line cooking it correctly. Don't overcook it. I'm getting this off now because it's done. Bear in mind what I said about overcooking it. When you take fish off the heat, it will still cook for a certain amount of time. Only a short amount of time, but as long as it's hot, it will still be cooking. Now, again, unfortunately, because we're uh, very off the cuff in this kitchen, I don't have a slice of lemon. I've got some Sicilian lemon juice. You will want a little bit of lemon juice on those. Bit of homemade tartar sauce there. Don't be frightened of the lemon juice. It might look a lot, but I'll tell you what, the fish can take it. Come on, come out. There we go. Now that, will be a very, very nice home cooked meal. Fish cook yourself, prepared, cooked, and soon to be eaten. Mm -hmm.